so basically how if you're going to do a virtual production in in camera vfx virtual production how do you how do you do it without not you know <laughs> not doing it really bad uh so it definitely starts at pre-production so that's a huge thing with our vp toolkit plugin and our pipeline and all of that is like uh understanding what your physical and your virtual elements are doing with each other it's very important to understanding all of that and then when you're on set there's a couple of rules that you kind of need to follow uh to get the best image uh, so let me see, this should switch to a new slide in a second. So here we go. Uh, so this is a top down diagram of like a virtual production stage. Uh, if this, here's the LED wall, this black line, mm -hmm. and then the blue of like objects represent virtual objects. So you can see they're all kind of behind the LED wall. Some of them are kind of poking through slightly. Something very important is that you can't have virtual objects in a physical space. So when you're prepping your Unreal Engine environments, you have to understand that anything that's going to be physical can't be within the space of your physical, uh, or going to be virtual can't be within the space of your virtual uh, thing mm. because your camera will render depth of field on it at the distance of the LED wall and not at the distance of the actual object. So imagine if this, this table here was a virtual object, you would be partly focused on it, but what your camera would actually be doing is rendering the depth of field of it being back here. Oh, yeah. Because mm -hmm. that's where it's actually rendered. So that's very important to take into consideration when you're placing your object. Now you can you can fake it a little bit. You know you can bring it through here. I have an example where we would have a practical wall, and just to help production light this wall, to help the director of photography light this wall without spilling onto the LED wall, we brought our our virtual wall out. Uh, I just put thirty centimeters. Uh, that doesn't actually <laughs> that doesn't actually matter. So. Uh, and the reason why we have that practical wall, we're not doing everything virtual is because you can't focus on the LED wall itself. You can't actually, because it's pixels, it will give you artifacts that do not look good in camera. Sometimes they're red lines, sometimes they're just you know wavy things. I can show you in uh, the setup in a few minutes. Uh, and basically this shows where uh, these black lines here are where the camera's uh, focal plane would be. So this is all the stuff that would be in focus. And based on this angle, you're very close to getting the wall in focus. So you have to think about this when you're planning out your shots and planning out, uh, you can't just put the character you know, right against the wall. And this is another reason why curved screens can be a little tough is because you start to have less area that you can actually focus because the edges of the wall could start to come into your, your camera's view. Mm -hmm. uh, so an, another thing good to note here is uh, we've we've used uh, solids or flags or grids uh, for those that understand lighting to block the light of our lights so that it doesn't hit the LED wall. Because uh, when you you spill light onto the LED wall, it lifts the contrast ratio. So basically, if you have something that's black and you light it, it becomes light gray. Mm -hmm. It doesn't become black anymore. And that's what happens to your shadows in your environment. We also have a grid on this soft box down here. And then uh, there's actually a, uh, uh, usually you can use like a duvetine or, or uh, cinefoil to block the back of your practical light so that it doesn't spill onto the LED wall. And then here we actually put a virtual practical light. So we stop the real light from spilling onto the wall, but then we motivate it with a virtual light so that it looks like it's spilling into our environment. So it, it makes, it starts to make sense. Oh, okay. uh, is there any questions before? Oh, yeah, we, yeah. Have, we have a ton. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shoot some off. <laughs> okay, for because example, this is probably a good place to be able to explain things too. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, Carlos Mesa. Do you think it's time for production companies 
to want to establish themselves outside the United States using this technology to produce with tax benefits, as for example, in Costa Rica and within free zone regimes. Yes. <laughs> that was a long answer. That was fast. That was, <laughs> that was a long question. Uh, <laughs> um, basically, yes. Uh, I mean, I'm currently on a project right now that's using tax, tax extend, extendives out of, outside of the U.S. So, yes, I think that that is a great opportunity to use this technology and to... Uh, uh, you know, get your production made just in general, if you're, you know, no matter what you're doing. But uh, a lot of this, most of the work that I do is outside the United States. So like I said, all of those commercials that we had shot uh, there was all in Peru with a small crew. So it's, it's not, it's not nearly, you know, it's not it. Every time it's, it's, I do more outside of the United States, I think, than in the United States. Oh, wow. uh, for the most part, unless you're in LA, because then uh, LA is doing a lot, but it's a lot of private studios and production companies where, uh, you know, they're building their own specific workflows and things like that, or integrating tools like the VP toolkit. Okay, uh, we have Thomas, and he's saying, he's asking, what do you think about projectors versus LED in terms of making this more accessible to indie virtual production market? Any pros and cons? Yeah, so I feel like I was originally known for using projectors for a long time because that's what I used for all of my original tests. And, uh, you know, every uh, when virtual production first started becoming popular uh, and people were buying LED walls or already had live event companies had LED walls, they'd put out demos and things like that. And then I'd put out a demonstration or like a, you know, just a, a, a development like, hey, look, this is kind of what it looks like right now, uh, video, and they would generally look better than that. And I was using a projector. So with a projector, though, you have to understand how to expose a camera lighting and how that affects your, your, your image and your dynamic range, because LED walls are very bright. Projectors, home projectors, not very bright. So cameras generally need a certain amount of light to be able to expose properly. Uh, you know, cameras have been, uh, most of my tests that I have used projectors. I've done tons of them in my studio in Philadelphia. We did like, a, you know, like a 10 by 10 by four foot screen and it was awesome. And it was uh, 4K so we could get really close to it and you could pretty much focus on the screen without any, any issues. So it like, I think the projectors could potentially solve a lot of problems. It's just very tough to get the consistency of a projector because you have hot spots and then you go, okay, now do you do, so if you do rear projection, you have a hot spot in your screen. It's very hard to get rid of, even with really good screens. The screen is, you know, sometimes unevenly lit. Uh, there's ways to get that perfect, but then you're still, you know, you still have to have a lot of lumens like you. I did a test with 7,000 lumen, two projectors connected together. I think they're both like 5,000 lumen or 4,000 lumen. And then after the calculations of, you know, how light falls off, it doesn't just double. Uh, it was like we're around 7,000 lumens. Uh, and it wasn't enough. I wanted to expose the camera differently and I wanted to be able to bring up our LED wall image. Uh, or or our, our virtual image in brightness so that to the camera, all of its highlights and all of its bright spots looked real and we still had enough room to have some, some shadows and some information down there where if you don't have a very bright thing, that means that you, you, your bright spots are probably very close to your dark spots and because you don't have that extra bit of, of, of headroom. Yeah. Uh, so I yeah. love projectors. Experiment with them. It's like if you're going to do it in a home office or something like that, I tell I'm going to show you a demonstration that we're going to be using a TV and a laptop. So uh, I'm 100 percent use projectors, especially for the indie market. Uh, but it, there's just a certain part where it starts to become very tough to get professional results out of. But, you know, we did a whole if you look up uh, Catalyst Virtual probably catalyst virtual virtual production 
uh, on Google, you'll probably find our video where we did, we do a breakdown and talk about uh, with Drexel University, we did a, a, a whole entire production. We did two like spec commercials that we shot little like one was a story and the other one was kind of like an art piece with a dancer and like a, an orb that was in the background. We made it so that we had trackers and then the trackers would change the orbs. It was like a program that I made. So anytime he'd dance, he actually had control of these big orbs behind him. So that project was great, but there was, there was definitely some, some exposure and uh, uh, exposure limitations at 7,000 lumens. So I would go check out that video uh, if you could find it, if you're interested in, the, if you haven't already seen it. Okay. Before you go on, uh, we have something interesting from Sean Norris. He says, different question. Do you see anybody using virtual production in a live environment, such as for corporate events, virtual galas, or that sort of thing, maybe like the metaverse? Yeah. So I worked on the Microsoft production. I uh, know, uh, well, I, I, we did a, a VP Toolkit and Catalyst did a demonstration at the Microsoft Production Summit where we showed just doing uh, an, an entire in-camera VFX virtual production on a stage and then answered questions and things like that. And we had a remote director and all that stuff. But for actual live event, um, I worked on the Walmart's associates meeting. Uh, so it was with Excite Labs, which is uh, Excite Labs when it comes to doing this type of uh, XR stuff, they they are very good at it. They've done it many times with high-end uh, clients. And so I had worked as an operator for them for the Walmart's Associates meeting. And uh, we did a mixture of XR and virtual. So the CEO could walk on stage and things would pop up out of the stage and we'd use the XR. And then I was mostly in charge of handling what was behind him, which was a a, a big, huge background that we were changing and there was animations with and everything was coordinated with the, the foreground objects. And then we had a single, we had a tracked camera on a, a jib that from that camera's perspective, everything looked accurate so that we could do jib moves and have the background, just as you see here, the camera's view was the whole entire wall, wall so that multiple cameras could see it. And it was, it was awesome. Uh, if you check out Excite Lab, uh, they have a demonstration of it, and somewhere just look for Walmart. And yeah, and it's and it was the same exact stuff that we're doing here. Just we added that extra element. Stipe came in and helped with the uh, Stipe is a tracking company that has onset services. Uh, that's a, another option for bringing in skilled professionals. Is some companies actually offer uh, their technicians to come out and help with the production which is wonderful. Okay, um, maybe maybe people might be asking what would be the price of something like that. I'm not sure if you have that answer, but uh, that would, that would you know. Uh, I don't. It would be incredibly <laughs> highly priced, I'm guessing. So it has to be a very- Well, it depends, you know, it, you know. You may, you may be at a, like a, you know, couple of thousand a day usually it's a day rate and then and an equipment rental so if your technicians are 1500 a day and then your equipment rentals you know four grand a day or or whatever that is probably not four grand a day maybe and then so they probably have some kind of markup on it so maybe you're paying a couple grand a day or they bid a, bid specifically on that project at a rate maybe they're like we'll do the whole thing for you know 10 grand 12 grand something like that Mm -hmm. but okay. who knows uh yeah we had a lot of prep work and things like that and that was that was a pretty high budget uh okay. project we had a month of 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 prep let's let's go on yeah yeah so uh let's see here let's move on a little bit so uh we got something special for your everybody in store once it moves on to it here i think i had this play for a while in the fast forward here. Mm -hmm. 